Now then, those of you who've seen my recent uh, ceramics video will realise I'm getting into this sort of field of interest and entertainment and as part of that a sustainable way of um, using ceramics is to dig your own clay and uh, run your own kiln and of course running a gas or electric kiln as far as I'm concerned is forget it on a small scale like I'm going to be pro or I'm proposing um, of course you know, in the college they had an electric kiln three phase because they're doing a huge quantity of ceramics and firing and it wants really quite good control but with the minimum amount of intervention whereas a wood-fired kiln you need to be there all the time anyway we're building a wood-fired kiln so I hope you enjoy this video as part of that journey so it's the evening and it's cooled down somewhat so I can crack on with this this is an area that I've cleared and uh, there's a big wood stack here and it just goes to show how when stuff builds up and you stack something a distance away then you've got this no man's land which actually at the moment is perfect for this uh, kiln so I've leveled out an area it's very dry so we've had to sort of hack away and chop away and whatnot um, so uh, as I say I've leveled it out and then put some sand down and then I've got these old tiles here and they're bedded on sand so we've got some sand and I'm hoping this is big enough But if it's not, then we'll just have to do something about it. But I've got some more of these tiles. But let's start here and see what happens. So I'm not bedding it on mortar. Just bedding it on sand. Then we'll start build, building the kiln on top of that. And you can pick those bags of, of sand everywhere. And of course if you don't pick them up, what happens is the roadside flail mower comes along and smashes into them and you've got plastic waste everywhere so it's beholden to us to tidy up after people who can't be tidy themselves so there we go whoops hopefully then we'll just start with the uh, storage heater blocks and the brickwork and if we have to extend further that way which I think will well I'm not quite sure which side the firebox will be but I'm thinking this side so I'm assuming we'll have to extend that flat area this side but um, it's on the old um, make it up as you go along so there you go. So we're moving on and I've realised that I've made a major boo-boo. Perhaps, um, you see it's three wide and two long, whereas really, and the firebox at this end, I think it wants to be the other way around. I think it wants to be three long and two wide. That way the, the, uh, the heat and the fire travels along the length rather than going straight to the back wall and bouncing backwards. I mean, you could think about a, uh, 
a baffle or something like that to make the the flames spiral round but I'm going to change it I shall put it um, so it's longer than it is wide so I'll just crack on with that okay this is just um, work in progress so it's three long and two wide yeah but it's not quite three long because the side there overlaps the end so it's a full two wide and it's not quite three long but that'll do fine and I'm using clay mixed with I've just dug this and of course it's the middle of summer so I had to soak the area for a couple of days with buckets of water but um, I've just dug this and mixed it with some sawdust and some sand and just sort of working it in and it's sort of there but there's some lumps in it so I have to break it up let's just um, show you the process it's rather messy mud pies but there are little lumps in it but actually you can get away with that so I'm just working it in and then building up the blocks and the bricks anyway that's just a bit of an update how am I going to switch the camera off now so I dug some more clay late yesterday afternoon once I'd finished up and uh, put it in this wheelbarrow then poured a load of water in chopped the clay up as much as I could but not excessively and then soaked it overnight and that's not bad that'll do quite nicely I might just add a little bit of sand to give it some temper and uh, and it'll dry it up a little bit but that's pretty good so that's the way to do it soak it overnight and spread the job out it's obviously something you can't rush And I've been harvesting some more LPG out of these reclaimed vehicle tanks. Yeah. So there's a video about that and I'll put that at the end. Let's go and have a look at the kiln. And there it is. I'm just thinking about the uh, firebox now. I really should have thought about it slightly earlier. But... Um, because this is put together with clay if I need to dig a few bricks out or blocks I can do I'm just learning how to do this but this clay when it's well soaked is pretty good actually it's not bad you can put it on with a trowel and it's got quite a good squash factor anyway there you go one lining of storage heater bricks and backed up with four and a half inches of brickwork and we've got space to put another where are we there we are there we've got space to put another course of bricks around the outside if we choose to so work in progress but it's getting there it's um, just over there there we go there's an inspection port with a brick in it so I can pull that brick out and check the temperature and what have you and where this brick is here I'm going to put another one one course higher I might not need it but it's better to have it there and not use it than the other way round so we're cracking on with that and this is where I've been digging the clay and this is a bank uh, that was built up from clay that was dug out when we had pond dug and so therefore and some of it's maybe oxidized or something like that but it's pretty good stuff and there's 
layers of grey in there and I think if I go down a bit deeper it will be really grey. And so I will throw another couple of buckets of water down there and then cover it up so at least it keeps everything damp. And there's the next barrel full of clay just soaking. It's only been in there for 10 minutes and of course if the wheelbarrow leaks then just bung it up with a bit of clay which has happened here. I just sort of dug down, pushed a bit of clay in the hole, job done. So we'll leave that for probably the best part of 20 hours, occasionally just turning it over and as you've seen earlier it does look pretty good or it's very usable, put it like that. I mean people talk about putting them in a pit and treading it and all sorts of things which is fine but um, this is less effort I'm, I'm supposing and it does the job for what you require. If you wanted it smoother you'd obviously have to work it and break up the really small lumps. Maybe leave it for even longer, I'm not sure. Right, it's another day and I've just been trying to work out the firebox and that's sort of getting there and just down there those footing bricks are stepped inwards by about an inch and a half and that will take the grate so we can drop the ash out and add air to the underneath of the fire. So I've just got to work out exactly how this is going to interface and of course this is a Mark 1 kiln because we know we're going to get some things wrong but you know there's a point where you just have to sort of crack on and work it out by fitting the bits together and then if you were ever to do another one you'd have the basic format or even decide what was wrong. On top of that just there we've got the makings of the chimney so let's just go and have a look. I actually had to take out a couple of those inner lining bricks and uh, once I built a pier to take the chimney I was able to cut those bricks, storage heater bricks, with a disc cutter with a diamond blade and Lee had donated that to the project. It's 110 volt, it's quite chunky he hadn't got a use for it, I've got marvellous use for it and those diamond blades are absolutely brilliant. But let's just go and have a look in finer detail. So we've sort of built this area here and this is corbelled out and supported on a brick pier and then I've cut a storage heater brick there and there and that height is supposed to line up with two bricks once they're bedded together. So that will go like that. And then I'm thinking of putting that there on top of the storage heater brick. Like that. With another one on the top. So that starts this. And then we'll do something the same, that end. Okay, and then we can build the, the chimney up. And we've got a flue there of five and a half by nine, which will be fine, I think. Yep, and we'll build this chimney up maybe three foot, so that if we want to slide a, uh, a tile, a big tile, or a piece of paving slab halfway over that uh, chimney top we can do to throttle it back or you know, at the end of the, the, the firing we can seal the chimney totally so it wants to be short enough so we can do that but that sort of seems like it will work got a nice big flue there and it comes through like that I think that'll do. Just trying to work it out with the materials I've got, but I think having cut that down, 
then this will be the level of the top. And I'm thinking pieces of angle iron on a basic frame that these will drop into. So it's the hottest day of the year, so time for a day off. But as you can see, we're starting getting the firebox done and we'll have to work out something there so the next layer of uh, bricks, storage heater bricks can come straight through so we might have to put a piece of steel in there yeah and then the top of this firebox will be some sort of frame with storage heater bricks and then uh, normal bricks on the top of that and the same for the top of the kiln itself that it'll be a top loader so there'll be a front wall here and then there'll be a frame with storage heater bricks removable ones so the uh, the top frame can be taken off and we've got the opening to the chimney and the chimney now I don't think I'm going to mortar the rest of those bricks on the chimney I don't think it needs it that way if I want to change it in any way at least we've got a few layers that come off easily but it's moving on considerably I think we've used three barrel loads of this uh, sticky clay putting this lot together but I've had various bits apart again uh, and built back up again the top row of storage heater bricks have been cut down to suit the brickwork so creating a flat area so the lid can go on as it were and of course at the moment I'm keeping it covered up so it doesn't dry out too quickly especially in this really outrageously hot weather which you know in other parts of the world it's probably not hot but we're just not used to it but um, there you go, as a bit of an update, we will do another video as and when I get further along with this project. But of course, once this is done, then um, I'll have to make some ceramics of some form to give it a test fire. Yeah, hopefully you've enjoyed this and I'd love for people to comment about this what they think I've done wrong, yeah, whether or not the, the kiln itself, the enclosure is too small or too big. I mean, if it's too big, we can always put a layer of, sort of two inch layer of clay on the inside as an extra insulator, although that might take quite a while to dry. And of course, once we've put this together, it wants to be dried really well steadily slowly and then and then a small fire lit in the firebox just to warm things through anyway comments catch up with you soon cheers for now